Hello everyone, this is Amrit Pal Singh. Welcome to the next video. Guys, this is a part three video of the topic CNN. In my previous video, I've talked about the uh, ReLU layer. Uh, before that, I've discussed about the convolutional layer. Today, we're gonna talk about the third layer, the, the third step, which is called pooling. Let's get started. So uh, in this case, the very first thing is, this is what is gonna happen today. Like we have an input image available. Afterwards, we have the convolutional step available. Now today, we're gonna talk about the pooling stuff. So what is pooling? Let's see first, it's uh, like formal definition. The pooling is a process applied to the output of the convolutional layers to decrease the feature map spatial size, like width and uh, height, we can say, uh, just to decrease the feature map spatial size. Like today, uh, you can see from image also, like we have a convolutional layer, which is little, uh, in this case, the resultant output is little uh, like shorter than the uh, original one, then the pooling layer, the output is again, uh, like uh, it is si uh, reduced in size than the previous one. This is what is happening here. Like it's a process applied to the output of the convolutional layer to decrease the feature map spatial size so it involves sliding a pooling window it may be two by two like it can be we can define that size over the feature map and applying a pooling function to the uh, values within the, this window the pooling function like examples are max pooling we are having the uh, we have the average pooling and so on the pooling function aggregates the information from each window to produce a smaller summarized output this is the point right it means we have we will be having one box available let's suppose of two by two size it will slide down over the feature map and keep on aggregating the uh, data in, in that particular uh, region right this is what is, is is called as a pooling now let's see uh, let's see it further now we are having here uh, the image available you must be wondering why we have this images of cheetahs are available what is pooling and why do we know it uh, do we need it it will be more clear from this uh, to answer that question let's let's look at these three images on these three images we got cheetah in fact it's the same exact cheetah the first image the image is positions pro positioned properly the cheetah is uh, looking straight at you in the second image it is bit rotated and the third image it is bit squashed so the, and the thing here is that we want the neural network to be able to recognize the cheetah in every in every single one of these images. In fact, this is just one cheetah. So what if what if if we have a lot of different cheetahs? Like in this case, what will happen then if we have a different cheetahs available? Because here's a cheetah, here's a cheetah, here's a, here's a cheetah, and we totally have a six cheetahs available. And we want the neural network to recognize all of these cheetahs as cheetahs only and how it uh, can it do that and if we are if they are all are looking in different directions they all are in different parts of the image they all like their faces are positioned in different parts of image somebody on the right side hand right, right hand side uh, somebody's on the left corner right uh, uh, somebody's in the middle they are all are different they all are but a, diff a bit different right uh, so the textures are a little bit different. The light lighting is a bit different. There's a lot of lit little differences. So if the neural network looks for exactly a certain feature, for instance, as a distinctive distinctive feature of the cheetah is the tears. This one. This is the tears. This one, right? Uh, this is a distinctive feature of the cheetah uh, that the tears that are on its face, going from the eyes or the uh, or the shadows that look like tears, right? The texture, the pattern that is going from its eyes down, it's on the on its sides of the nose, it look like tears. So that's a distinctive feature of the cheetah. But if it's looking for that feature, which is learned from the uh, certain cheetahs in the exact location or in a exact shape or form or texture, it'll never find these uh, other cheetahs. So we have to make sure our neural network has a property called spatial variance, invariance. So meaning that it doesn't care uh, where the features are allocated, not uh, so much uh, in, in which part of the image because uh, we have kind of uh, taken into consideration with our map, with our pool, with our convolutional layer, but doesn't have to be care if the features are a bit tilted, if features are a bit different in texture, if features are a bit closer, if the features are a bit further apart relative to each other. So if the feature itself is it's a, it's a bit distorted, a neural network has to have some level of flexibility to be able to find st still find that feature. So uh, what is that? That is what pooling is all about. So here in the in the uh, in this sec in this slide, I've talked about a uh, uh, important feature called spatial invariance. So I want to just discuss it more detail. What is that? It allows the CNN to detect the features, objects, even it doesn't look like uh, like uh, doesn't uh, look look exactly like the images in its training period. The shift invariance or the spatial invariance covers small differences such as movement shifts of a couple of pixels. This is the like uh, property we have to follow in the this pooling stuff, right? So today we're gonna talk about the, the the specific type of pooling called max pooling. Although we have a different type of pooling available, today we're gonna we'll be more, more focusing on the max pooling. So what is max pooling? As I already told you, this is a feature map available and we have the two by two, let's suppose the pooling window available, which is slide down to the right, right? And we have just apply some aggregate function to get a uh, some value. Let's suppose it may be an average, it may be a sum, it may be a max, right? 
so in this case what is happening we have a feature map available we have the two by two window available and then we have to just find the maximum uh, out of this four numbers so zero one zero one means obviously the number is one in the same way it will be just going to the right it will be sliding down to the right by define you can define that stride if whether it's one or two it will just just uh, move accordingly and then keep on calculating the maximum in that region right at, at the end we'll be ending up this so this is the like a uh, pooled feature map out of the you can see the window is now here it means it's already slide down to all the parts of the feature map now it's here now we have got our pooled feature map and you can see it here this is this this is a comp it's quite reduced in size as we compared to the feature map it means the output of the pooling layer it will be a it will be more uh, reduced one if we compare with the output of the conventional layer right so moving further this is what is happening here we have an input image available uh, after we applying convolutional function we got the convolutional layer this is what you all are know what is this is the feature maps available afterwards we are applying the pooling and we got the pooled feature layer a uh, pooled feature means which is more uh, like significantly reduced in size so other, what are the other type of pooling available we already talked about the max pool in this case you can see the filter is 2 by 2 this window is 2 by 2 in size the strided 2 means it will move to 2 two strides it means it will first it will uh, calculate the max out of this blue window then it goes to the two position to the right then it uh, find the maximum in this green region in the same way it will find the maximum in this yellow region and in the same way it's find the maximum in the red region in the same way we have an average pool available whatever it, it did in the max pooling this it will be same but in the, instead of finding the maximum it will be finding the average in that region right uh, in the same way we can also have another type of pooling like global max pooling in which it is just finding the uh, you can see you can, it is finding the global uh, the global uh, value we are having which is called 25 which is max in this case again it's finding the global average pooling means taking into consideration all the numbers and then dividing by 25 we got 13 right these are the different type of poolings available so now at the end what are the advantages of the pooling right the first is feature invariance i've already have discussed that max pooling help us help the model to become invariant to the location uh, and the orientation of the features this means the network can recognize an object in an image no matter where it's located second is dimensionality reduction meaning is we, uh, we are just by downsampling the input the max pooling significantly uh, reduce the number of parameters and computation in the network thus speeding up the learning process right and third is the noise suppression meaning is it helps uh, it, the max pooling help to suppress noise in the input data so it is not the end of the video we have i'm just uh, left with you uh, i want to just show you one thing here which is called uh, this this uh, this little experiment it's like uh, it's a, a 3d uh, visualization of the cnn it was developed by adam harley so what we have to do is we just have to draw a number here let's suppose i'm drawing a number let's suppose three so you will see all the layers here coming in action if i draw if i put a three here you can see the down sample drawing is three meaning it's the first guess uh, the first guess uh, the, the system has uh, it has already recognized it is a three number and second guess is six means the second uh, probability is, is six so this is the uh, image that we got out of this the third this is the input image followed by this is the layer it's called convolutional layer right you can see this is a convolutional layer afterward this is a pooling layer the next layer you can see it here my cursor is hovering over there it's a pooling layer it is exactly as the same as of convolutional layer but you can see it has preserved all the features Right, although it is reduced in size, if we just see it properly, it, it is 3D in size. You can see that this three is little uh, uh, reduced in size, but it's preserving all the features. Again, next one we are having another convolutional layer available. Then we have a downsampling layer available. Then I have just hidden the uh, fully connected layer, which I'll be talking about in my upcoming videos. I hope from this little short little video you have now understood what's the meaning of pooling layer, what advantages it, it possesses. In next video I'll be coming up the next step. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next step.